Amen. We can do better than that. We ought to clap like God is still in control. Let's give this choir a hand as they come down. For they have blessed us today. Letting us know that it's Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, he is. And we worship him both in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. I'm excited today because the God I serve is still alive. Yes, yes. I'm going to say that again. The God I serve is still alive. Yes. And for that, we give him praise and we give him honor yes. for just God being God all by himself. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited today because he's allowed me yet another grand opportunity yes. to share with you that which he has shared with me. Yes. Amen. We're going to invite you to look with us Old Testament reading. Old Testament reading as a musician continue to play softly for us. Old Testament reading, Habakkuk 3. Habakkuk 3. It shall be the basis of our sharing with you today. And we're glad that God has some faithful folk up in here today. See, see, with the faithful folk, that means we got room to sit where we want to sit. Amen. Hallelujah, God. I'm reminded, I'm reminded when it was time for Gideon to go up in battle against the enemy. Come on, Pastor. I'm reminded that God told Gideon, I don't need a whole lot. That's right. Matter of fact, I'm going to dismiss some of your folk to let you know I just need a small amount Amen. to do what I need to do. And God says, I'm going to reward the faithful. Habakkuk 3, Habakkuk 3, Old Testament reading through chapter of Habakkuk, the 16th verse. Back of 3 and 16, as we share with the listening hearts today. Habakkuk, the third chapter, the 16th verse. The word of God reads When I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall there be any vines, fruit on the vines. The labor of the olives shall fail. The fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the foe. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. To the chief singer's on my stringed instruments. Amen. I like this word today. You may be seated in the presence of God. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in God of my salvation. I want to talk about dealing with dark days. Dark days. How to handle your dark days. Dealing with dark days. Before we engage this particular passage, I want to take this opportunity to simply say the message that God has laid in my heart today, I will not apologize about what I will say. Mm -hmm. Uh, we embrace and we will encourage not only the saints, but those who are listening. We encourage all of you, don't forget God. Amen. Amen. And I understand what we're facing. I understand what some are worried about. But I did not apologize over the fact that I still trust God. All right, me too. Amen. As a pastor, I believe in what the scripture says, and it talks about the importance of obeying the laws of the land. Yes. And as a result, we will obey 
the laws of the land. However, you must understand there is a greater law than what man can ever establish. And we're here today to let you know that God is not only in control, but God is in charge. All right, sir. And because God is in charge, I have no fear about what shall happen because every day I'm trying to get to a place where I've been preaching about all my life. So as we engage this particular passage, we want to look at dealing with dark days. Better yet, how to handle your dark days. Amen. It was in a response to a disaster that happened in a short span of time. The U.S. government started a website that was called Disaster.gov. Okay. It was a website that was created by our government years ago entitled Disaster.gov. It was later changed to Ready.gov. It was after two planes hit the Twin Towers September 11th, 2001. The government came together, created a website, and they called it disaster.gov. It was after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 that caused the levees that kept water back from New Orleans to break, flooding in the Ninth District, the Ninth Ward. The city was turned upside down. Yes, sir. And so the government changed the name of the website disaster.gov to ready.gov. Mm -hmm. Points out simply that the government wanted its citizens to be prepared or be better yet to be ready for dark days. Yeah. The government was saying whether it's man-made or whether it's a natural disaster, the government was telling its citizens, get ready. Amen. Whether planes are flying into towers and buildings or whether hurricanes were destroying cities, the government was saying, how do you deal with dark days? Mm. The government at the time shared with us even today, those things that they consider, how do you prepare? What do you look for in order to be ready? They tell us to be informed. They tell us to listen to the news. They tell us to listen to the radio. They tell us to listen and look for coded colors of a system. Yes, sir. They tell us that every family should have a kit in their home. Flashlights and batteries and water and non-perishable items. Amen. The government tells us to be ready. Amen. But just in case you should be in your own home without power, the government tells us families should have a game plan. If something should happen, That's right. you should have a meeting place. Yeah. If children should separate from their parents, you should instruct them where to meet you. Yes, sir. The government says you've got to be ready. Yes, sir. They address those things that will affect our streets. Yeah. They address those things that will address our cities. They address those things that will address our towns and our lives. They address those things that will address those things that will affect our minds, our families, our home. Matter of fact, they address those things that will address the, the, those things that will affect our way of living. But they, the government, have left out one important thing. Uh -huh. 
we should prepare to address those things <laughs> that will affect our souls. All right, Jerry. And all of you are getting. Yeah. Get ready. Yeah. And all of you are getting. Getting. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Be prepared. And all of you are getting. Stay safe. Yeah. And all of you are getting and hoarding up supplies. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your soul. Yeah. All right. All right, Don't put God on the back burner. Yeah. As the possibility of the dark days will approach. All right, Jerry. It's amazing how there are some shortages on the shelf of tissue. Yeah. But there's no shortage on the shelf of Bibles. All right, sir. Nobody's running to get the word. Yeah. Everybody running to get some juice. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Everybody running to get some extra rice and get some extra cornbread. And, but nobody's running to get the word. God says in the midst of chaos. Don't put me on the back burner. Yes, and if it makes sense to expect something to happen, it makes sense when people are worried and they're scared. The house and their jobs and their community is at stake over what is known now as a common enemy. Mm -hmm. It don't make sense to me yeah. to be so prepared to live in a world that's already fallen. Mm -hmm. We're chasing to be prepared in a world that's already doomed. Mercy, mercy, mercy. I'm mercy. All around us, you'll find the fallen people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you pray, yeah. well. no matter how much you sing, no matter how much you preach, no matter how much you give, there will be some days in your life you will have to be prepared for disaster when it hits your soul. All right, all right. For Jesus said in this world, you shall have tribulation. That's right. Yeah. And the church of all should not be alarmed, but the church should open his Bible and rejoice over the fact that God's word is fulfilling. Amen. David, the writer, reminds us in the psalm, he reminds us that many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of it all. Yes. The time is coming when it will be dark and when it will get dark in your life. And, and, and my brothers and sisters, and it's up to the saints to be prepared to get your hearts and your minds right to handle the dark days. Well, well, amen. As you prepare to stay in a safe place. And already I'm going to be in a safe place. But let me help you out a little bit. It really doesn't matter. And yes it does matter. But no matter how safe you think you are. You're still living in a condemned world. Oh, yeah. you're, right. you're right about it. You're right. Oh yes. You're right about it. And I suggest that you continue to prepare to live in a new world. Mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to stay safe in a condemned world that will pass away sooner or later. Yes. All right, all right. You can't, die, can't allow Satan and his antics to pull you off of your game. You got to maintain your focus. You got to maintain your faith. You got to maintain and look for your future. And it's more importantly, you got to keep your eyes on your father. All right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Come on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that there's, there is no virus, there is no disease, there is no flu that can outlast the power of your father. Right. Yeah. No weapon. I think I'll say that again. No weapon. There's no flu, there's no disease, there's no virus that can outlast the one that says, I am in the beginning and I am in the end. I am Alpha and I am Omega. Just because it surprised us, it never surprised God. Because when God says in the beginning let us, he already knew about 2020. Yeah. He knew. He knew. And God was telling me early this morning, he says, Roberts, 
I need you to remind the people that earth shall pass away. Yes. Heaven. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But not one jot of my tittle, not one jot a tittle of my word. I'm standing here on his word because his word won't pass away. I'm going to be happy all by myself today. I'm standing on his word and not just sitting on the premises. Yes. When they go back to their home yes. that I gave them. Yes. When they locked behind them doors yes. and hampered down for a few weeks. Well. When they watch their movies and eat popcorn and surf the net. When they get lost in Facebook frenzy and they text each other on a regular, tell them don't forget about me. Yes. Don't forget. Yeah, I'm still Remind them that don't forget about me. I know they're trying to stay safe in the doom world, but don't forget about me. Yeah. That's right. I, I, I know the importance of them washing their hands, but remind them that I'm not sleep and it's all in my hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I, I know they will have practice and I know they'll practice social distance but remind them while they're practicing to be distant from each other let them know I'll never leave them nor will I forsake them. Let them know I realize their fear because of doctors and scientists and government can't seem to find a cure, can't see how to fix it but let my people know it's not what they can see but rather what they can't see. Remind my people that it's not what they see because my people walk by faith and not by sight. He said when you get to 3006 Richmond Hill Road, tell them they might not see a cure but I am the cure. They might not see what's going on but I am a what, what's going on. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things. I wish I had some Bible readers. Yeah. Of things not seen. Yeah. Remind them in their preparation of getting ready. Don't forget their soul. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. And while everybody is trying to find a safe place, yeah. remind them of the old hymn of the church, safe in his arms. Yeah. And God is speaking. He's, he's, he's trying to address your dark days. God, God is speaking. He's trying to address your worries. He's trying to address your fears, your anxiety. He's saying to us today, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let them know it might be dark, but I operate in dark times. Yes, yes, yes. Here it is in our text. As God speaks to all of us today. Habakkuk here, and God has a conversation. God, listen to the prophet. God, how can you use ungodly people to correct godly people? They're talking. He has a confession of faith. God, how can you use tragedy to produce triumph? Well, y'all need to hear the conversation of Habakkuk and God. God, God, how can you use a disaster to produce deliverance? God, how can you use sickness to produce salvation? Come on, God, how can you use a storm to produce stability? Come on now, God, how can you use chaos to produce Christ? God, how can you produce havoc to show them heaven? God, how can you use a virus to produce and show your people about victory? That they are having a talk, they are having a conversation, and God says, Habakkuk, let me respond to your question. Y'all right, right. read this when you get home. Right. He says, I can use things outside of my will yeah. to bring you back to my will. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. God says, I 
can use things outside of my will in order to bring my people back into my will. And the only thing that's going on right now is God saying, I'm trying to bring my people back into my will. They, they, they have forgotten about me. Come on, somebody. They use Sunday for relaxation. They forgot to keep it holy. He said, I'm going to use something to bring them back. If they don't come back to my house, I'm going to send them to their house. I wish I had some help in here. If they don't come to my house to pray, I'm going to send them to their house to pray. I'm going to use something outside of my will to bring them back into my will. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Preach it. Preach it. How can I remind? How? 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 Habakkuk says to God, how can I remain positive? Yes. God, when you allow all this negativity well. around me. And you got to understand the name Habakkuk simply means to hold on or to embrace. It was a time of destruction. It was a time of death. It was a time of gloom and doom. It was a time of hardship. And Habakkuk, the name means to hold on or to embrace. You understand what was going on in the backdrop of this particular text? Apostasy was going on. God was bringing judgment because of unbelievable hardship was going on. God says the king himself had led the people to, to worship and, and serve idol God. Hear me today, saints. God used the king to lead his people, Jew, to serve and worship out of God. Yes, sir. And God says, I'm going to punish them, not because I'm mad with them, but I'm going to punish them based on the judgment that they all walked away from me. Well, well. Y'all ain't listening today. How do you, how do you maintain a readiness during an unsettling and uncertain times? Habakkuk will show us that in just a minute. How do you get ready? Watch this. To save and to protect your soul. Ah. I can't talk about the virus. I got to talk to you about your soul. Yeah, right. yeah. Because in a few hours, we're going to depart from this place. Yeah. And, and, and we may not connect again for a little while. And, and I will not leave this pulpit reminding you that when it's all said and done, it's all about your soul. Yeah. That's right. right. God right. is still in control. Right. Still. Still. Yeah. I, I can't leave here. Not to remind you that at the end of the day, when the sun sets, wh wh where is your position in God? As your spiritual leader, I've got to remind you that God is sitting high. He's looking low. But guess what he's doing? He's taking in an account of everything that's going on. And he's more concerned right now, thank you, Holy Spirit, about your soul than your safety. Yeah. All right. All right. Because if your soul is right, right, you're always safe. Yeah, yeah. Good point. I like that. See, y'all keep missing that. I like that. that. I like that. If folk run around here scared, that means you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, I got enough sense and I'm not going to be a fool. But by the same time, I'm going to walk in victory. Lord, if you don't fix it, thank you. If Corona take me out, I know where I'm going. I wish I had some help in here. He did not give us a spirit of fear. If I catch the virus, help me, Holy Ghost. Guess what? It will usher me into a place where I've been preaching about for these last 20 years. All right, all right. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. It's, it's, it's about the soul. All time. It's about the soul. About the soul. It, 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 the soul. Bless the Lord. God says, remind the folk. Remind. Before they go home to their houses. That's right. In the comforts of their home that I gave. Well. Uh -huh. Remind them it's all about me. It's all about him. And it's not about them or the government. Yeah. yeah. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 So here it is. Habakkuk tells us. How did you handle it, Hobaka? How did you deal with it? Watch what he says in verses 17 and 18. He says, I had to remember something, Roberts. What did you remember? He said, I had to remember his sovereignty never changes. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, it never changes. Never changes. His sovereignty never changes. God don't change. Yeah. And the good, he's still a good God. Yeah. And the bad, he's still a good God. Yeah. And when you're up, he's still a good God. Oh, yeah. When you're
you down, he's still a good God. Good God. His sovereignty never changes. Yeah. And so when we go through what we go through, you've got to remember that I serve a God that never changes. Never. Come on, depression. Never. Come on, economic challenges, because my God never changes. Never. He can take never. care of me and see nothing days. He can take care of me when the government shakes down. He can take care of me when there's no more baloney on the shelf. He can take care of me. I'm happy by myself. When there's no more bread on aisle 14, he can take care of me when I can't find no way to take care of myself because his sovereignty never changes. Never. Yeah. Never changes. And what he said, he says, he says, he says, I had a conversation with him and his sovereignty never changes. He said, but not only does his sovereignty never changes, he says, Robert, his salvation never ceases. Well, well. He says, I am saved. Yeah. Because of the salvation of Almighty God. Well. And see, salvation rests solely on the grace and the power of God. Mm -hmm. Salvation is not based on what you like, what you don't like. It's based on God's grace toward men. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. We're all sitting here because of the grace of God. Yeah. 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 Now, now, I'm going to be crazy. I'm going cra to be crazy. I I'm crazy enough. <laughs> That if he gives me life, yeah, and he gives me breath, yeah, and he gives me enough sense to be careful, yeah, I'm crazy enough to come out to his house to give him praise. All right, all right, I'm just that crazy. Trust it, I trust it. Because I'm operating under the fact. That salvation has come to my life. And guess what salvation does? It gives me a guarantee. It gives me a, a guaranteed ticket to let others know that I might slip, but I'm still saved. Come on, somebody. I might not get it right, but I'm still saved. And not only that I'm still saved, that when he calls my name, I'll be able to go to a place where you don't have to worry about a virus anymore. I can't let an already condemned doom world cause me to hide in his world. Alright, Alright. The, the stock market may collapse. Yeah. Yeah. But but Habakkuk says his strength never collapsed. Never failed. Never. Uh, never. His strength never collapsed. Yeah. What, what, what are you saying, Pastor? Habakkuk says his strength never collapsed. He says his strength it's like the hind feet of a deer. <laughs> See, y'all don't even hunt. Uh, y'all just eat deer meat. Y'all don't, y'all don't hunt. Uh, notice what he says in the text. He says, like the hind hoof of a deer. Because if you understand the deer, when a deer runs from his enemy, his hoof are designed to run through territory that if he step on something, it won't cripple him while he's running. All right, all right. All right. His, his hooves are designed that when he's running from the enemy, he can crush what's ever under his feet. Y'all keep missing this. But, but now, not in flatlands, but if a deer is in hilly, mountainous areas, yes, sir. and the enemy comes, at the back of his hull, he has what they call a little catch arch that's designed to hold on to slippery places. All right, all right, all right, all right. And when he runs from the enemy, yes. On the back of his hull is designed to hold on yeah. to the rocks yeah. as he go higher from his enemy. Oh. Right. I'm, I'm going to bring you home with this. God says when your enemy comes, yeah. I've got something on you yeah. that will give you traction yeah. to bring you higher to me. All right. Thank you, that your feet won't slip. Thank you, Lord. Thank because I'm taking you higher, higher. than your enemy. Yes, oh, yeah. I can cause you to rise higher, higher. than your circumstances. Yeah. Come on, Corona. Come on. I can rise higher, higher than you can walk through.
through the streets. Yes, sir. Yes, because God sir. says, mm -hmm. when you draw near to me, yeah. Yeah. I'll draw near to you. Yeah. Yeah. Habakkuk shows us, he shows us the disposition of God. God develops us through difficult times, and that's what God is doing right now. He's just simply developing us through a difficult situation. Why? Why? God says, watch what I'm doing. He says, people were not speaking. I'm going to pull them together. Amen. He, 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 he said, families were divided. I'm going to have them all under one roof. Yeah. Come on, somebody. He said, he, he, he said can y'all hear what God is saying to us today? He says, Democrats and Republicans have been fighting for the last five years. I'm going to make sure they talk about the same thing. I wish I had some help in here. He said countries have been against countries and nations against nations. He says, but I got something that will have everybody talking the same language. He says, I know how to bring them folk back together. I know how to restore them back to where they need to be. I know how to get them in a place where they can't do nothing but trust me. Come on, somebody. Those party animals, he said, I shut down their bars. Come on, somebody. Those who like recreation, I close their fields. I wish I had some help in here. Those who put more money in their hair than they do in the offering plate, he said, I shut down the beauty parlors. Those who rather give to the barber, he said, I cut the barber shop off. He said, I have a way of bringing you back to me. I'll use what's out of my will to get you back in my will. Ah, there he is. There he is in the text. It's in the text. He says, he says, robbers, let them know the first thing to get over this thing, you got to acknowledge your plight. Yeah. Well, Rebecca says, I acknowledge my plight. He says, what's going on? He said, I looked around and there's no fruit on the vine. Yeah. I looked around, there's no wheat in the field. Yeah. I looked around, there's no flock to take care of. Yeah. He says, I got the first admit, God, I'm in a place that only you can help me. Yeah. Come on, CMC. Yeah. God, yeah. we're a God, we're a barren Lord. We're empty Lord. Things are not working right, God. We in a bad situation. He says, in order to survive your dark days, you got to acknowledge your plight. He said, then second, you got to affirm your praise. Notice what he said in the text. I will rejoice. Yeah, I will rejoice. He says, after I looked around and everything was falling down. He says, I will rejoice. He said, the reason I'm going to rejoice is because I recognize the character of God and God never changes. And finally, he says, I'm going to acclaim my provider. Yeah. Saying the Lord is my strength yeah. And the Lord is my protector yeah. I can see Habakkuk saying Well it's some dark days yeah. And yeah the enemy is all around me oh. But he said the Lord is my strength yeah. He said I'm living in some dark days yeah. And I know it looks like it's all over yeah. But the Lord is my strength oh. He said I'm living in some dark days oh. It looks like the enemy has won, but the Lord is my strength. I'm living in some dark days. I can hear back and say I had a little talk with Jesus. And he let me know that he's still taking care of me. I want to give CFC some hope today. The Lord is still taking care of his church. The Lord is still taking care of his people. The Lord is still standing with outstretched arms saying whosoever will let them come. I'm glad to let you know that I am a survivor of dark days. And one of these old days, whether it be next week or two weeks from now, I'm going to step out on victory and say, didn't I tell you? God is still in control. Didn't I tell you? Even in a dark day, he'll bring light into every dark situation. I stopped by CFC to get my shout on to let you know that God is taking us higher. God is elevating us. God is placing us out of harm's way. I can clap. I can rejoice. I can say thank you, Jesus. I can give God the praise because God is. God is. God is. God is. God is. Still handling my dark day.
because God is still yeah. handling yeah. my dark day. Yeah. That's what her back was saying. I had a little talk with him. Yeah. And he used bad stuff yeah. to get good people yeah. back to the right place. Oh, uh, y'all keep missing this. And God used bad stuff yeah. to get good people yeah. back to where they need to be. Thank you. Oh, bless his holy name. Thank you. While you're wondering, he's already working out. That's my job to give you hope today. While you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. That's why I serve him. While you're testing, he's already taking us through the test. That's what kind of God we serve. I'm excited. I said I'm excited. And the reason I'm excited is because God is using something yes. that he gets the glory. Yes. I see him at work. Yes. I can't blame this on the Chinese. Yes. I can't blame it on the Japanese. Yes. I can't blame it on this world or that nation. Yes. But I can say God will permit he will. certain things to happen yes. that he gets the glory. Oh, yes. For the sickness is not unto death. Yes. But the sickness is that God gets the glory. Yes. Folks, you're going to survive yes. the dark days. Yes. And all of your preparing. Thank you, Lord. And all of your trying to stay safe. Thank you, Lord. Just stay safe in his arms. In his arms. I'm crazy enough to believe yes. there's healing in his arms. Yes. I'm crazy enough to believe yes. salvation is in his arms. Yes. Yes. Whatever you do, CFC, don't leave this place. Yes. Go home for the next three weeks and totally forget about God. Right. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't do that. And I speak to those who are listening by, by Internet Live. How dare you stay home and forget about God while you're home. Yeah. For those who say they've been too busy to pray. Worship. Yeah. Worship the Lord. Now you're going to have time to pray. Yeah. Yeah. While you're home. Yeah. While you're home. Do more than spring cleaning. Yeah. Yes, sir. Take time. Say, God, yeah. you got me in a standstill place. Yeah. What are you trying to tell me? Yeah. While you're home. Yeah. Don't have house parties. Yeah. But just celebrate the fact yeah. that God's going to see you through yeah. the dark days. Yeah. Would you stand all over the building? Would you stand?